are a few people in Bolingbrook who are as well respected or wear as many hats as village clerk Carol Penning. Serving her seventh consecutive term, she plays a vital role in the storage and preservation of public documents. In addition, her responsibilities include the safeguarding of the election process, preparing and certifying village board meeting minutes, summarizing discussions, and recording votes. In a word, Ms. Penning's position is challenging for the wide variety of tasks the position requires. When did you move to Bolingbrook? I moved to Bolingbrook in 1978. I uh, grew up in Chicago and in 1977 moved to Woodridge for about a year and uh, was looking for a house and found a really nice townhouse in um, Bolingbrook and that was my first home and um, first home that we ever purchased. And um, I um, love the city of Chicago, and so it was hard for me when I moved out to Bolingbrook because there weren't a lot of the amenities that we see here today in Bolingbrook. And um, you know, I had access to downtown Chicago and walking around, and you know, the buses and the trains. And I came out here, and there weren't any trees, and it kind of scared me at first. You know, I was used to being in a community that had a lot of history in it. And um, Chicago, of course, I grew up on the northwest side. And when I moved out to Bolingbrook, we migrated from the northwest side to the southwest suburbs, which was kind of unusual. A lot of people that grew up on the south side of Chicago moved out this way. And um, so I couldn't find any Cubs fans at first. Fortunately, that's changed a lot, and you have your Cubs and your Sox fans. But initially, most people didn't even know what the Cubs were about. But anyway, it was uh, very exciting uh, to make the move to Bolingbrook, and um, I've seen a lot of changes in the time that I've been here. Sure. So um, why did you run for public office? Well, I, when I moved into Bolingbrook, there was a little job opening, and it was part-time, and I started working over at the Village Hall. Uh, working for the finance department initially and um, I got the job I actually think because they felt sorry for me I walked in to the finance director's uh, office and at that time it was Ken McConaughey and the village at that time was just starting to separate and making a finance department and I had fallen downstairs and I had my leg in a cast and so when they saw me, I think they were like, if she was brave enough to come here for an interview with her leg in a cast, she's our person, you know, because they saw my determination. And then within a few weeks of that transition, the uh, then village clerk, Grace Kohler, asked me if I wanted to come and work for her. So I started working in the village clerk's office, and before long I was working full time. And... Um, you know, I, I loved it. And as time went on, uh, the village clerk and the deputy clerk moved away. One went to Florida, one went to California. And I all of a sudden was asked to be the acting clerk and the deputy clerk, and I started working for the mayor. And I was very young at the time. I was only about 25 years old. And um, I really, the bug kind of bit me about the job and what I was doing in the job and keeper of the records. And I thought to myself, you know, I really want to run for that office. I'd like to um, serve the community. And I thought I would do a good job. And I, you know, felt strongly about um, Grace Kohler. She had, she was a very tall woman, almost six feet and she had blonde hair and she looked like a Viking and she said to me when she left almost like in a godlike voice Carol protect the records of the village of Bolingbrook and I almost at that young age it was like a mission so I felt like I needed to keep the records for her and for the community based on that request and um, that's why I did it and so are there any certifications or preparation needed to be the clerk? You know, probably, and everybody is not um, a type of person who might enjoy this type of work. Um, it is um, a very detailed um, 
type of work where you are a keeper of the records and you have to maintain that. Of course, it's a desk job and never, not everyone enjoys a desk job. But um, I, in order to enhance my skills, because when I first walked in, like I said, the clerk, one went to Florida, the other one to California, and I found myself very lost. So I started reaching out to other municipal clerks, and the, the work is very specialized. So you really need to acquire education. And what I did was I started going through a lot of training through local organizations by going to their meeting. The municipal clerks of DuPage County, um, the municipal clerks of Illinois. There was not anything for the um, Will County yet. You know, as time went on, I helped form the municipal clerks of Will County, but we started getting training that was credited towards your education. And I acquired in that time the um, certification of um, certified municipal clerk and, you know, and just kept working at that. I went through a three-year um, training program through the University of Illinois and um, just kept building and developing. And as time went on, I had located a lot of mentors through other municipal clerks who helped train me. And then what I did was I became a mentor and became became uh, started training other municipal clerks and we formed the municipal clerks of Will County so that we could reach out because there, when you come into an organization like the village of Bolingbrook, there's only one municipal clerk. So how do you learn what to do? So you have to network. And I also became president of my state association for one year in 2000 and uh, represented it through an international organization, the village of Bolingbrook in the state of Illinois in, in Europe, which was very interesting. And I learned a whole lot when I was there too. So it's like anything else, you have to keep up with what's going on. You have to be very mindful of what's happening with the law. You have to understand about elections. You need to understand about record keeping. Um, you also have to have very good skills to work with the public. You also need to have um, good skills to um, manage the records in, in, them, in themselves because the records never are destroyed. Every proceeding that takes place at village board meetings must be kept forever. And um, so we, we scan a lot of that documentation. When I first started um, on board many years ago, they microfilmed it, but they found like any medium, it just after a while started cracking and it didn't so a lot of that was all transferred and uh, we have original books you know not every municipal clerk will keep them some of them will destroy those but I like the actual original documents and we're fortunate in a way because we were incorporated in 1965 so that that means we're able to you know we don't have to go back to some municipalities that were like that were incorporated in the 1800s, so they have tons and tons of documents and paperwork. So we we don't have as many, but we still we're coming on our 50th anniversary, so we do have quite a bit. But you really need to understand um, what the whole position's about because we work with elections. You know, we help people. We we just do a variety of things. Register people to vote. We notarize documents. We have to make sure that after a board meeting, all documentation is processed and it gets to the right um, uh, organization. We also have to work with officials like your representatives, your senators, your Congress people, because we're always finding that we need to help our residents reach out to the, those people and we can help them cut some of the red tape because a lot of times people do not know where to go or what to do or even how to start and that's where we come in. And municipal clerks have a tendency, people reach out to us, sometimes they don't reach out to the mayor because they always think, oh, the mayor is so busy, you know, they feel he's, it, while our mayor is approachable, a lot of times people feel they don't, they are a little bit leery, but they 
feel very comfortable with municipal clerks and they reach out to us more more often than they do initially the mayor and then if there's something really critical or urgent or something problematic something that I can't help within the framework of the organization then a lot of those questions and concerns will go directly to Mayor Claire or the mayor to handle the more sophisticated issues if you will so what do you enjoy most about being village clerk? The thing that I enjoy the most is really helping people. I love helping people. And um, I love resolving issues. And um, I like being a part of the community and um, getting to know who are what I would call the movers and shakers. Uh, people who are focused on trying to make a positive difference, trying to change. Uh, things for the better um, and I have I'm so blessed because I meet all those people through um, let's just say the Lions organization the Bolingbrook Chamber of Commerce the local businesses um, the church community just fabulous people that are out there really working hard to make a positive difference and um, trying to change things and make things better for people who let's say for example are not in financial positions um, they may they may be having challenges with their homes or you know just issues that they're facing and then we we try to direct people as best as we can I also like to teach I help a lot through the um, the um, scouting community I love um, working with classes in the community where we teach them about village government and about the election process. And I also love working with um, students that are honor students who are working on their community uh, work. And we try to help them by giving them projects and things that they could do to help. And I also do a lot of work with people who might have had minor incidences with the law and um, they have to do court-ordered community service work. So I try to work with people who may have made a mistake and um, are trying to get themselves back on track. But probably it's a lot of the interaction with the community and um, just, just, just helping people. Okay. I understand you also have involvement with the Historical Preservation Commission. Tell us about that. I love that. The Historic Preservation Commission, again, you defined as you're working in your office and you find out naturally the village clerk is keeper of the records. So I have a passion for history, loving to understand where Bolingbrook came from. When my heart was broken, when I did left Chicago to move out this way initially, and it was a transfer, I was married at the time, and that's where my husband's transfer took him. And um, I um, realized someone had said to me at one point and said, you either are want to be the type of person who lives in a community that has history, like Chicago or Oak Park or thereabouts, or in a community that's making history. And Bolingbrook, from the time I moved in, was certainly making history. I got an opportunity to see some of the early history or understand that, and then a part of this last many years that I've been working in for the village of Bolingbrook to see Bolingbrook's history happening. And the Historic Preservation Commission was like a natural progression because of my love of history. And um, there was a group of people that wanted to form a commission and went to Mayor Claire and asked him if he would consider adding the, uh, a commission onto what he already had, plan commission, uh, zoning board, um, police and fire board, you know, beautification commission, and if he would add historic preservation commission. So in 1993, 
That's exactly what he did. He formed a commission of the village and called it the Bolingbrook Historic Preservation Commission. And I've been there for ground level. And one of the reasons why it's been so exciting is we have been slowly working our way to the village of Bolingbrook's 50th anniversary. And I am real excited to be a part of that because that'll be coming soon in 2015. So I, I love it. I love working with the people and I love hearing about the stories. And, and we actually are working on a, a, a series with a Bolingbrook Community Television and Jim Singer and it's historically speaking and basically we have been covering some stories uh, with the intent that as we get closer to the village's uh, 50th anniversary that we will air those and we just recently the last one we did was on Old Chicago which was so much fun and we truly enjoyed that and there was so much information there that we're going to do a part two to that we found when we discussed in that show that was aired um, that there was a couple that had gotten married at Old Chicago so many years ago and that couple contacted me after they saw the show and they're still married after 30 some years and we, we really want to get them on the show and interview them and have them talk about their experience but there's so much to talk about history and I know there's a limited amount of time but I'm honored to be a part of that group Regarding local contributions, tell us about your work with the Community Service Council and how it impacts residents' quality of life. One of the interesting things about the Community Service Council is I did not, I got involved with it because I started realizing as I was working in the office here and I started hearing about residents that needed help with um, how, housing issues or they had questions regarding um, you know, family counseling and things of that nature. And I was beginning to realize that a lot of people, their budgets were very limited. And um, they had a hard time trying to pay to get the counseling that they needed. So what they might do is forego it. So there was an organization that I knew of in town called Community Service Council. And what they were is an organization, a nonprofit that has been in place over 30, 35 years. And um, what they were doing basically was they would counsel people and help them out and they would give them a reduced rate. So I felt that that was better than paying 75 to 150 dollars an hour and the insurance company started cutting back where they were would only pay for counseling if you were going to a psychiatrist and those fees were are exorbitant so little by little i started working more and more with the township with community service council with um, your state representatives in springfield and anybody else i could reach out to that would help people because the Village of Bolingbrook's primary concern is police, fire, and public works, but Mayor Clare has always had, or in this administration, Mayor Clare and the Board of Trustees has all, always been very concerned about, you know, the needs of people in the community, so they had a certain amount of dollars that would went to, um, through the Black Grant Fund program, which is a federal program, and um, they received so many dollars and they gave money to the Community Service Council to help with housing issues. And then they also, um, the Village of Romeoville, the Village of Bolingbrook, um, the um, uh, DuPage Township, United Way, um, Will County, all of them collectively try to, or have been supporting the Community Service Council to help offset those fees and keep the, the uh, dollars down. And um, so little by little I began to understand about Community Service Council and one thing led into another and I became a board member on the um, Community Service Council and then uh, Marty Reynolds who was the president, unfortunately he passed away and the agency hit a wall with um, federal funding started being pulled from all non-for-profits 
because you know they were starting to look at budget issues and started bringing the costs down to the local age you know local governments and um, the door is almost closed like I said on community service council and I jumped in and reached out to a lot of the local um, governments and tried to restructure the financing that they were receiving from the federal government and managed to help keep the doors open so then I ended up becoming president of the organization and I love working with um, Community Service Council, guiding it, giving it direction. Um, there are uh, licensed uh, therapists on board and people who have certifications through um, HUD, you know, to help people. And I feel very comfortable that we have this agency in the community helping Northern Will County. Um, a lot of our residents if this wasn't in place, they don't always feel comfortable reaching out to like Joliet. They just don't want to travel the distance. They like a local agency and I feel very happy that the funding sources that I mentioned continue to support Community Service Council and keep the agency uh, going. Um, but again, it's just another branch, another uh, program that I like to be a part of because it's helping people. What is important for us to know about you? Well, I love children. <laughs> I feel very blessed that in this position I'm always around children and as a matter of fact I keep a little treasure box over there so that when they come in they can get a little prize or gift and you know I've got little toys because a lot of times when parents come in and they have problems that need to be resolved they bring their children with and I like to keep them busy and occupied and a lot of times when I'm resolving problems and issues in my office I have a lot of inspirational type sayings and words and it really keeps people busy while I'm making phone calls they love to look at the pictures and you know I love family and I have a wonderful family that lives in this community from my mother to my sisters, to my nephews, you know, to my cousins. I mean, it's funny how we all kind of gravitated out this way, you know. Um, I love, um, well, I love working with Bolingbrook Community Television. I have to thank Margaret and Jeff and Tony for helping out. And of course, Jim Singer, who works with us on Historically Speaking. Um, there's so many things that I would like to just say you know in reference to myself but I'm pretty much an open book and most of the people in the community know what I'm about and nobody's perfect that's for sure and I have my my um, issues but you know I try to do my best and I uh, feel that I was planted here you know some people might say from a higher power but you know I feel that I was guided to do this. I certainly, when I was a child, didn't say someday when I grow up I want to be a village clerk. I didn't know what a village clerk even was until I was in my early 20s. And um, I kind of made this because I thought it just really says it all, you know, choose a job that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And I've been really blessed to be in a job that really is just so awesome and every day it's different and it's interesting and I meet lovely people and I'm inspired by the work that I do and hopefully you know I'll be able to I'm lucky um, grateful this term I was unopposed so I get another four years starting um, April 9th 2013 and if the people in this community like my work and they want to keep me around and I am healthy and wise and all those good things and still can keep up the pace, you know, I'd like to stay here until they stay, say bye-bye Carol, you know, but I enjoy what I do and uh, I want to thank you for taking time being with me today, Margaret. It was nice to meet you and um, I'm glad you had an opportunity to do this interview. And I'm glad to have the opportunity to answer the questions so residents really do get to know a little bit more about who Carol Penning is and what I do for the Village of Bolingbrook as Village Clerk.